So the traveling hacker box from hackaday.com has arrived in the state of North Dakota. Let's open it up and see what's inside. So we have a 3D printed skull and crossbones. This looks like a chip card reader. A Mac 7219 LED matrix kit of some sort. There's another one of them here. This is tiny RTC. Some big green LEDs full of stickers. A Cypress Pisa kit. A Zoom. I was actually thinking of nabbing that. Maybe try and install Rockbox software on it, the open source MP3 player software, but it appears to be maybe not in functional condition. Row of a couple of LEDs. Those are, must be like those WS, what are they told? Uh, 2812s? The serial addressable ones. The interesting thing is there's no circuit board. They're all just wired across in the back with fine wire. Some sort of little roving... Oh, it's a little tracked car with a USB connector on the back and some sort of circuit board inside of it. An LCD luminary micro. This, I'm not sure what it is, but it's probably, it looks like it's seen better days. Heat sinks are bent over, although that could be fixed. The parts look okay. Purple PCB, is that maybe from Oshpark? A bracket that used to be attached to another LCD. A PIC programmer with some paperwork in there. I might have to check that out later. NXP LPC link and another programmer of some sort. I remember seeing this in one of the previous project logs. Oh, Texas Instruments. TI Launchpad, Tiva C Series, development board. Ooh, some antique RCA power resistors. A note that says works, need battery, $5 on eBay. Don't know what that was stuck to. Little plastic case with some chips in it. SN74HC148, 823 priority encoder. I haven't used one of those, but I've used the opposite chip, the HC138. The decoder. More components. A bag of LED stuff I saw in previous. Well, LCD here. And a board with a bunch of bar graphs on there. You could make a spectrum analyzer or something with that. Another LCD. Odd LED things. A clock board. More of these LED things. They got an envelope on them like email and a telephone and two computers like a LAN icon. This is probably meant to be a clock display, but there's a colon up here. Crystals. Not sure what this is, but it looks very antique. Oh, vintage transistors. It says 210 9-64. Does that mean it's made in 1964? One humongous diode bridge. 12 amps. I see this MB Corp crossover thing is still in, in the box. Looks like it's seen better days. The screws are rusty and it's kind of scratched up. But basically, this is just a, a speaker crossover network. We have heat shrink. A chip in a tube. I see a microchip logo. Pick something. Can't quite read it. Ooh, a panel of very tiny boards or something. This is a good example of how you can panelize a tiny circuit board and instead of working with tiny little postage stamp sized boards you work with the big panel and then when everything's all put together you just snap them out of here. Well, a huge wad of more stickers. Hackity Prize. Hack RF from Great Scott Gadgets. Oh this would explain the smart card reader I pulled out at the beginning. Here's a bunch of cards. <coughs> Here's your smart card reader. Here's your smart card. Goes in there like that. We have a Parallax RFID reader. Uh, it looks a little beat up, but maybe it still works. And an RFID card. And something that looks like a Ninja Throwing Star. Throwing Star Land Tap. Oh, great Scott Gadgets again. Here we have a whole pile of boxes. Here's some nice little boxes. 
of various integrated circuits. A CD4071. I don't remember the old 4000 series CMOS numbers well anymore. And then we're down to a box of stuff. See, it says box of stuff. Another card reader of some sort. There's more chips in a Dallas Maxim box and something with a crystal and an F shaped antenna trace. Two digit LED display. Some little RF board. You can tell it used to have a metal can soldered to these gold tracks around the edges. The Verizon Wi Fi thing is still in here. And another little RF board. It's got a coil hanging off the edge. Interesting circular inductor track. I don't know if you can see that in the light there. A little circular, circular spiral trace. Ooh, missed it. Another panel. Is that the same thing as this? 30 crazy clocks. That's 27 crazy clocks left. Pedo Electronics crazy clock. And we have two more bags. More Geppetto Electronics boards. FTDI be gone. GPS discipline OCXO. There's one that's built up. Divide by three. USB ISP. A whole bunch of stuff from Geppetto Electronics. Have to check out their site. And the last big bag stuff. Another USB thing. It's ultra programmed. Some sort of optical gadget. Scanner module of some sort. Because this looks like a line scanner CCD maybe. Chips in a tube. Another small LCD. Some chips and static foam. Some of them look a bit antique. DVD player display maybe. A motor. Another big capacitor. Stepper motor. Beagle Logic. Tablet, LCD, and cap touch keep. So I have a BeagleBone blackboard. I think maybe there was a built up Beagle Logic board in this box previously. One of the previous recipients, recipients nabbed it before I did. So I might have to look at the website on this and see if it's too hard to build it up. That's an awfully fine pitch surface mount chip, but if all of the stuff is open source, if I can actually build this up and get it working. A board with three miniature little, must be like optical interrupt detectors. That looks like it's about all that's in the traveling hacker box for this stop. So that's about it for unpacking the box. Now I have to figure out what I'm going to take and what I'm going to put back in. So with a fresh set of batteries, this cheapo Vivitar camcorder thing, with its massive 1.5 inch screen, actually powers up and works. I actually haven't put a memory card in it and tried to record anything, but the screen works. Maybe I should have shot my video with this thing. Or maybe not. So if you are designing a circuit board, with TO220 parts sticking up off the board like this, and you mount a heat sink on them, please make sure that you have a way of mechanically securing the heat sink to the circuit board. You need to have mounting holes, but ones that are plated through. These are not plated through, so even if you get the heat sink in there and tighten this back down, it's still going to fail. Because TO220 parts can barely support their own weight standing up in space and be reliable like that. You can't expect them to support a heat sink as well. So make sure you have a way of mechanically mounting your, your heat sink securely to the PCB. In this case, plated through holes and solder these posts really good. This luminary micro LCD controller thing actually powers up and works. So here's what I'm taking from the Hackaday IO Traveling Hacker Box. The uh, Grand Idea Studio Parallax RFID reader in a card. 
I've never done anything with RFID stuff, so I figured it was about time I did. The blank Beagle, Bo Beagle, own, uh, Beagle Logic Logic Analyzer board. Maybe I can build that up. Max 7219 dot matrix LED kit. There's three of them in there, so there's two more for future recipients of the box. Some stickers. And some of the Geppetto Electronics stuff. I'm going to grab this uh, GPS Disciplined Oscillator, the little micro ISP programmer, and three of those crazy clock boards from that panel. There's 24 of them left for future box recipients. So here's what I'm putting into the Hagger box. I realized not everything in the box has to be a circuit board or something electronic. So I'm going to include this nice Maxon gear motor. And I've got some micro switches here. A couple bigger ones, a couple smaller ones on brackets. You can use those for limit switches if you're building a 3D printer or something. And a couple of these optical interrupt sensors that detect when something goes through the gap there. And to hook it all up, I'm going to throw in a bag of just some assorted terminals and stuff. Onto the electronic stuff, I think I'll throw in this old webcam board. Don't know if it's really useful for anything, but I've always thought it's cool how you can see the die, the sensor, all the bond wires and everything. I'm going to put in a couple of these little boards. If anybody is doing an audio project, we have RCA jacks for left and right audio and video and an S-video jack all out to some headers. So those are convenient if anybody wants to do some audio work on something. And a backlight inverter board. I've got a bunch of these. Maybe somebody can uh, figure out something nefarious to do with a little bit of high voltage. I've got these a ton of these screen wipe packs. They're really neat little cloths for cleaning anything. Lenses, screens. Well, I figured I'd throw a couple of those in just for the hell of it. And these. These are a favorite part of mine. They are an Ixis IXFN 200 N07 MOSFET. 70 volt 200 amp MOSFET. They're not recommended for new designs because it's a pretty old part. I first used them in 1994, I think. But you can still buy them from DigiKey for like $23 a pop. But with 200 amps of real current too, with the big base like this, you could mount these on a big heat sink and you could actually do some significant currents, unlike these TO220 MOSFETs to claim 200 amp currents, but you couldn't really do it because you'd melt the part leads. And if you didn't melt the part leads, you couldn't get the heat dissipation out of the TO220 package. But with these, you could take an old CPU heat sink or something, bolt them down. You could make a 200 amp H bridge for motor control, or you could uh, make a dummy load or something. So. Those could be interesting for somebody to do something with. 